Great. Thank you, David. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I, I'm going to give you some, some details and boast about the advantages of our School of Business. We think we think it's very valuable, and we think our students who come to us uh, do great and, and love their time with us. So let me take you through kind of the high-level overview. So why should you pick Trent? Um, we believe that, uh, and our instructors all believe, that we engage with you at a personal level. Our students tell us they get to know their instructors well. By the time they get out, they have a good relationship with us. Our, our goal is personal, purposeful, and transformative. That pervades all of our courses. We believe students, young people today, want to do good in the world. They also you know, want a career in business, and we think both go together. We also have our faculty who have links to the business community, which I will get to in my presentation. And our students are all engaged and, and active in our program and in extracurriculars. We do very well in the rankings. We've been ranked number one now for uh, might be 11 years in a row. I'd have to check that. But 13, first, actually. Oh, okay, I got up. Yeah, we just got the award last year or last week. Yeah, it, I can't keep up. We're doing so well. I'll mention we have we have small upper year classes where we give you individualized attention. Our instructors are there for you. They're engaged. We have discussions. Uh, I won't lie to you. Our, our introductory courses tend to be large. But we also break up our large lectures into smaller seminar groups. So you still get to meet as a small group of approximately 20 to 25 students. And, and that way we keep that kind of small school spirit, even as our introductory courses are getting a little larger, basically because a lot of students want to take them. We offer you options in a way you can make your degree unique to you. You can pursue the areas of interest to you, whether they're specializations, internships, I, I'll mention those as well coming up. And we like to say you get a degree you could get if you went to one of the large schools, but you get it from us at our scale. You get everything you need. And, and I will talk a little bit about this later, but our grads go on and do great things and we place them across the range of firms. So in case you want to see what it looks like, this is actually probably what it looks like almost today. This is our Peterborough campus. Uh, you can see the nice river that runs. Uh, there's boating on that river. It's, it's very pretty most of the year. And we have our Durham campus. That's our urban campus. That's near to Toronto. Uh, it is your choice. We offer our program on both campuses, identical programs, different instructors. There's a slightly different flavor. Students tell me Peterborough is, is well-placed in, in the rural setting. Durham is an active urban hub. Uh, it Durham's a little smaller about 20% of our students. So classes can be on average a little smaller, but I'll, I'll say more about that coming up. Basic admissions. At Trent, we do not have special admission to the business program. At some schools, there is a specific admission requirement to get into business. Our only requirement is that you have what we call 4U math, which basically is your senior level high school math course. And we, we don't even specify which, as long as you have that course, or equivalent, then you will be fine to get into business. The difference at our program, unlike others, is that while we don't have a minimum of admission requirements other than what you see here, we do ask that you maintain a minimum grade point average. As well, there are a few courses in which we ask that you maintain an average of 60% in our first four, four sorry, our four first year courses. Um, and that's not a, a huge hurdle, but it's what we use to kind of manage our program. So as I said, you can specialize your degree. We have basically five pathways through our degree. You can do our Bachelor of Business Administration. That's our main degree. And you can do it with or without specialization. And I'll come back to specialization. We also now have a co-op program, technically two. We have one in accounting and one in business. So most students who want to take some business degree would do our business co-op. Unless you really want to be an accountant, then you would choose the accounting co-op. I'll note that the admissions process to the co-op programs are separate. So you would apply to them specifically, and you can get more information on that uh, from the admissions group. You can also do a joint major. This is also unique to Trent. In our program, you may take your Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science in Business and any other degree. So, for example, you want to take business and media studies. That's a very common combination. 
So you take a media studies degree, you follow their requirements, and you take a business degree, you fold them together. And at Trent, you can mix almost any two degrees you want. We've had students take psychology in business, economics in business, biology in business, and all of those um, connections are, are easily done. If you're in another program, you can still take business courses through our minor. And if you take a minor, you're essentially taking our core courses without all the additional options. And then on your degree, it would note that you've taken a minor in business. And finally, we have a dual arts degree, a dual business and law degree. And that's also a special program. It's a rigorous program, but uh, we've seen some of our graduates now and um, they have a great experience in that program. So we can provide you with more information on any of these. So keep these all in mind. And I will note, all these programs are available on both our campuses. I had mentioned specializations. You want to do business, but you have a particular area you want to focus on. This is the list. So our most popular are accounting, human resource management, marketing, and consumer culture. Those are our three top, and students who take those end up in those types of careers. More on that later. But we also have students who like our finance or our economic specialization. Or entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is actually growing uh, probably the fastest, and more and more students are interested in that. And that's particularly true of students who want to set up a business of their own after they graduate. Uh, and we've had some great stories of successful businesses established by Trent grads. I'll mention the co-ops. Co-ops are a special admission program, higher average required to get in. So unlike our business degree, our BBA, you actually need a minimum grade of 80% to apply. We recommend you have equivalent to somewhere closer to 90 to get in. There are a limited number of slots. So that's why we have the high standard. We have the two co-op programs I mentioned. The one for accounting is only really for those who know they want to go through. Once they complete that program, they are eligible to enter into the CPA's professional education program. So it's a pathway to become a CPA. And on the way, we place you with several of our accounting firms locally or in Toronto. And we've already placed students there who have gone on to take a job with them upon graduating. So that's an excellent option. But if you're not interested in accounting, maybe it's HR, then you do our business co-op. And you, do, you don't have to specialize. Students tend to, but they don't have to. The one thing to note about a co-op program is you have three work terms during the four years of your degree. And, and I'll show you the chart in a second, but they're not always in the summer, so be prepared. You may have to spend a summer in study. We tell students you can complete your co-op in four years. You can graduate with your cohort. Accounting, however, because of requirements to complete the CPA, requires an additional term. It runs an extra summer. So let me show you how that works. So if you're doing the regular business co-op, you would be a regular student studying on campus in year one, fall and winter. Then you would take courses in the summer as well. Now, summer is a little quieter on campus, but we still have a lot of students on campus taking summer courses. So you won't be alone. It'll be nice and quiet. You'll have the space to yourself, but there'll be other undergrads present as well. You're back in the fall. Then you'll have a work term in the winter term of year two, followed by a study term following summer. And you can see how it progresses. So it's necessary for us to have the study terms in the summer in order to get you through in four years. The accounting co-op extends an extra summer, as you can see there. We've, we've delayed the work terms until later because our accounting firms want our students to have completed their intermediate accounting courses. So we need to get you through the sufficient number of accounting courses before we can send you out to work. But students appreciate that preparation. If you don't want to do a co-op, but you're interested in getting workplace experience, we offer two additional paths. One, our field placements. These are available to third and fourth year students, and they're available on both campuses. What you do is over a term, so the four months of, of academic term, you'll work a minimum of 100 hours, which is typically one full day a week over the course of the term. So maybe every Friday is the day you end up working with your placement host. There is a minimum GPA to apply, 
and there we, we wait till third and fourth year because we need to prepare our students. We help you with preparing your CV, interviewing skills, basic business skills, and we link you with our local and not so local employers within the Peterborough area, within the Durham area, and even across the GTA and throughout Ontario. We don't yet play students internationally. That we're working on, but it is not in place yet. The other pathway through we call internships. These are a little different. So the placements are an academic credit. You take it as a course. You don't get paid. You get the experience and potential future employment, but you don't get paid. The internships, in contrast, you take a term off. You're now, you're still in your program, but you step out for a term. You take a job for pay, usually for four, six, or eight months. Six is typical where you're working for a firm and developing skills. You get an academic credit, then you return, you re-enter the program and finish your degree. So this is an excellent opportunity for students to get that work experience, to get paid for it, and potentially find an employer when they graduate. The minimum GPA is slightly higher on the internship. Again, these are fourth year, we give you plenty of time as you're going through the years to prepare and get information on what they involve. We play students everywhere, large, small, local, not so local, the big banks, the consulting firms. This is just basically a uh, cross section of some of our experiential learning partners for internships, for placements and for co-ops. Um, and we're very proud of our relationships. We think our students do well. They take all sorts of jobs. We have several, since our accounting specialization is large, we place a lot of students with accounting firms they can help with accounting, tax advice, tax prep. We have some in banks, downtown Toronto, the big banks, local community banks, loans officers, anything. We place students in data an analysis here at Trent even with government agencies, with uh, private consulting firms. Uh, we also uh, have opportunities in digital marketing, event coordination, and all sorts of uh, marketing type related jobs. We also have a strong HR program, and we've placed many of our students in EL opportunities where they actually do HR specialization, where they manage records, um, where they uh, engage with firms, and this can be both in the large companies and even smaller ones as well. So we have a variety of opportunities, big and small, depending on your interests and where you match up with an employer. Now, not necessarily as much in relevant information for you. We also offer what we call our postgraduate certificate programs, something you might want to consider later in our most popular specializations. We also have a graduate degree. So you may be thinking, well, you're here as an undergraduate, you know, I had a great time and I really need that additional certification, that additional edge for employment. Well, we now offer our graduate program, our master of management, and it's offered on both campuses. Until recently, only Durham, we now offer it on both of our campuses. So you're thinking, great, this is all exciting. What it's going to look like when I arrive in September? So here's what your first year might look like. And you don't have to worry too much about making sure you get all the courses. We help you. We offer you the Min 1000 course. That's our introductory course. We also get our students to take introductory financial accounting in the first year and introductory microeconomics. And then you have two courses you can choose, and we encourage you to take them outside of business because part of the degree requirements at Trent, you need to take some courses outside your major. In your winter term, we encourage students to take the mid-2010 management skills, uh, as well as the other economics course, Introductory Macro. We can offer you some admin courses, and in addition, we ask that you take additional, again, especially uh, optional courses outside the discipline. And many students will choose to take their Indigenous Studies required course. You can get more information about that, but that's another Trent requirement for all our students. And many students take the Indig 1001, and actually the instructor for that course is a business instructor who also handles the mid 1000. So you can get to know your instructors well right from the beginning, even in your optional courses. Do we offer scholarships and bursaries? Yes, we do, but I'm not an expert on what we offer. Here is a sort of a listing of some that we offer. Now, depending on your status, your financial situation, your grades, 
there are different options of scholarships and bursaries available to you. And we have dedicated staff who specialize in that information, who can advise you further. And that's about it for now, David. That's my high level assessment. That's really great. Thank you so much. You uh, you you got all of the big major talking points in that presentation. I I have a few questions, and I, I know a few questions are going to be coming into the chat soon about this. Uh, but I just wanted to highlight. So I just want to keep this in frame here. But see all of these programs. These are all kind of what we offer within the field of business, and this is how we loop them together. So for the students that have the view book, and the view book looks like this. Um. And, you know, we have a lot of people that travel on the road and bring these view books to students. So for the folks that have that, th there's a lot of programs listed in there. And sometimes it can be a little bit confusing when I'm consulting with students because, you know, they see the accounting co-op and they see accounting. They might see economics as a degree and they might see economics as a specialization. So I just want to encourage students, you know, you can download this on our virtual open house website, our view book. Um, you can download it from the website or if you have a physical copy, there's lots of different ways that you can experience business when you're studying at Trent University. And, you know, one of the other things that we we talk about often when we talk with students is, you know, they might understand business and they want to study business administration, but that field sort of fractures off into a lot of different directions. And Byron, correct me if I'm wrong, but do students typically, um, you know, enter into business administration in first year? take um, a whole broad-based amount of courses and then eventually sort of work their way towards a specialization or find something in that first year that they then decide, oh, you know what, I really like marketing. I'm going to go into marketing and get a specialization. That, that happens quite often, right? Yeah. So a few students know what they want up front. A few, but relatively few. Yeah. Uh, the vast majority come in knowing a little bit about business. They take their first year course they're exposed to some other courses. So all business students have to take a set of core courses in marketing, in HR, in accounting. Once they get exposed to it, then they begin to see, yeah, well, I really like this area of entrepreneurship or accounting. And that's typically the path through the degree. They then decide in their first and even their second year, I want to specialize in this. Now, some choose not to specialize and you don't have to. You can do a BBA degree picking and choosing from a whole variety of areas. It is entirely up to you. There is a set of core courses you need. But beyond that, as long as you fulfill the prerequisite requirements, mm -hmm. you're good to go. We have academic advisor in-house who can advise you specifically about what you need to do and build your course planning. And you can re you review that every year. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so you you mentioned um, the co-op, and I just wanted to highlight again that the co-op average for admission is a, typically a little bit higher than the non-co-op program because there's essentially less seats available. So you have to meet the admission requirements and then do better than the admission requirements to gain admission. And uh, as you were speaking about, uh, as you were on your slide uh, for the admissions, those were what we call the Ontario Secondary School Diploma Admission. So it was all graded within Ontario, which is the governing body for education in this province. Um, and, and so we talk to a lot of students that are travel that are from around the world. They're taking the IB program, they're taking the AP program, the UK curriculum, they're graduating with O levels or A levels. What we always strongly encourage students to do is apply. So if the Ontario secondary school diploma curriculum doesn't necessarily make sense to you right now as the student or potential applicant to Trent university, that's okay. Apply to Trent University because we take those documents that we that you provide for us and we assess them based off of our curriculum. So you don't have to do any of the um, translation into our curriculum. We do all of that. Give us your transcript, apply to Trent University, and then we'll take that information and assess it. I just wanted to highlight that. Here's a question that we get asked pretty often, and it's always framed funny like this. Does Trent University make students study in a particular um, in a particular campus? For example, you know, you've been admitted, you're admitted to the Peterborough campus, or you've been admitted, you're admitted to the Durham campus. How does that work for students? Students choose. We do not, we I think we hold a place for you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong for residence purposes, but you can take courses on either campuses. Some do, some will commute back and forth. Now, be aware they're about 100 kilometers apart, so it's not an easy commute. There's no direct bus link, but you are entitled to take courses on either campus. If you know of a particular instructor, for example, on one campus, you may be enticed 
take one course with them at the other campus. No restrictions whatsoever, other than what fits your timetable. That's great. Thank you. So we we have a few more. Um, we have at least one more session that's going to focus on particular areas within uh, business. So finance, and then potentially one for logistics and supply chain management. So I won't get into those ones too much. But something that you said during the presentation um, caught my attention more than the others, which was the CPA designation. So we talked to a lot of students, international students, who are interested in the CPA or CFA. And so learning a little bit more about that is really helpful for the students at this level, because when we speak to students who are interested in accounting, the end goal typically is to enter the CPA profession. So can you just walk us through the pathway a little bit about, you know, you start in first year, you start taking those core courses, you build the, the um, accounting courses that you have, and then you take those credits and you bring them over to the CPA designation after additional credits. Could you walk us through that a little bit more? Sure, happy to. So in every year, there are some accounting courses starting in first year with introductory financial accounting. Then in second year, you would take introductory management accounting, and then there's intermediate of each of those, as well as advanced. There are specialized courses in taxation and auditing, and a few other courses in strategy and statistics. All of those, once you complete those over four years, and we guide you, we have a full brochure outlining the courses you take by year. Um, once you fulfill all those requirements, when you have your degree, you are then eligible to enter into what the CPA call their professional education program. So for them, if you had no accounting courses, they would require two to three years of basically what we offer, accounting courses. Once you complete those with the right grades, you then enter into their professional education program. So that's managed by them. And then they provide the additional training, which ultimately leads to you taking the qualifying exam and becoming a certified CPA. So once you complete our degree and take our accounting courses, upon graduation, you enter into that professional education program. You are fully qualified and eligible. Uh, and again, you don't need to worry about the mapping, the course mapping we've done for you. We, we, we encourage our accounting students to follow our mapping because it is a little involved. There are prerequisites. You can't take advanced before you take intermediate. And you can't take intermediate before you take the introductory. So we make sure we sequence those so everything fits as you go through the years. Thank you. That that's amazing. We ask we answer a lot of questions about accounting while we're traveling um, in these particular countries. It's a it's a very popular program everywhere. It's our most okay. popular specialization. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just have one last question before we go, and it's it's pretty broad, so you can sort of take it in any direction that you'd like, but it's about the emerging technologies that we might have or emerging courses that we might have. You know, as we're speaking to students who are coming through, sometimes they're, you know, they might be, um, you know, in their 20s or in their 30s. Most of the students that we speak to are 16, 17, 18, 19. And so the job market that they're going to be entering is typically a lot, or we can imagine is going to be a little bit more different than the one that we're currently in. And specifically within the field, field of business, because it's so broad. I'm just wondering how Trent University, you know, stays up to date on some of these emerging trends in the field and, and how we might manage some of our courses or some of our technologies to adapt. Yeah, that's an excellent question. So we we, we update our, our content, our curriculum. I mean, basically yearly, we meet throughout the year to discuss what's new, what's required, what do we see as necessary to, to provide for our students. We introduce new courses where we believe we have a need that isn't yet being fulfilled. A couple of years ago, we introduced the course Business Data Analytics, which was essentially an, uh, aimed at a business student of, of all uh, specializations or no specialization at all so that they could get some grounding in just basic data analytics so that they are conversant in that. And then when they go for a job interview, at least have some experience in that. Now, some who are more technically minded may pursue that further in more detail. That's part of our finance specialization. We're also introducing into other areas, areas that 10 years ago, I wouldn't have expected them. For example, in HR, HR used to be all about managing personnel. Well, now I find out it's more than just that. It's about assessing data. And in fact, a grad of ours, an international student, about 10 years ago, uh, ended up uh, after graduation, did a master's and is working at Shopify 
and was key in redesigning their payroll system. Hmm. And she started out in our finance and uh, economics, I believe, specializations. So it's not the sort of match I would have thought of. Yeah. But in fact, these days, I mean, tech is across all our fields, and we provide that across those fields because we know the students need it. Yeah, and that's that's part of the value of a good education too is is being a little bit more adaptable. So although you might have taken a course in human resource management and it's transferred into something else, you still have that skill to be able to critically think and solve these problems when you get into the field. So that's another another little plug for just education in general. Okay, so my final questions, and I like to do this typically, is is to very briefly just tell us a little bit about your your academic background so so what's your field of interest and, and what courses do you teach here because you know the students that we're talking to right now the, those are the ones that are going to be in your class so they they want to know you a little bit more so i'm i'm in the department of economics and as you saw when i showed you that slide of your courses you'll take in first year two of them were economics courses and actually through the course of your experience you may take two more possibly even more so i have taught several of the economics courses uh, I have taught introductory uh, macroeconomics. That's actually one of my favorites. I've met students coming in and I follow them through the years. I also teach a fourth year seminar in economics that most business students don't take, but I also teach international trade. And that one is also very popular. The majority of my class are business students. Some of them may be economics specialization. Others may just be business students who are interested. And that those are my interests, international trade. I like first year. Uh, I, I enjoy teaching first year students because you have questions in your first year. How do these things work? And I love engaging with students in first year. Now, as director of the program, I don't always get to teach as much as I would like, but I hope I get to teach some of some of you students when you come to train. Well, that's amazing. That, that's a great note to end on. Thank you so much, Byron Lou, for being here. It's, it's really, it's a, it's a pleasure and we can really feel your passion for the program and for Trent University. So Thank you again, and uh, and uh, we hope to see all of the students soon. There's going to be more academic sessions following this one, so please, um, you can stay on this webinar link, or you can join our next one, or you can join the question and answer webinar link, or you can join our campus tour link as well. So there's lots available for the students who are currently in the session and want to learn a little bit more about the programs. So thank you very much. Thank you.